New Images. It's a youth and community centre. So New Images was built in 1969 and at that time there were three youth tutors appointed to run the centre. These were guys who worked in the school as teachers and at night they then worked and ran the youth centre. So in the late 70s, our focus was on finding out what the needs are for young people in Winsford and how this centre could help them. Three things we found out straight away was the junior club was uh, one of the key elements, football was another key element and the music was a key element. So in 1977, there were not many members and our job was basically to, to uh, increase that and get the centre active. One of the ways we did that was to um, start a junior club and it proved to be very popular. Um, so that's been a success story right through from the 1970s. The Football League at that time was pretty um, was, um, unique. The only league that actually ran locally was an under-18s um, league. And we were involved in that, but there was also a demand by the younger age group to have a football league. But the problem then was that there was no junior football pitches around. So we had to um, talk to the schools who had the facility you get this sort of partnership working with other agencies developing as well, which is quite useful for us. When you have a football league, you need to have a, a cup final, and Barton Stadium became the venue. And again, that was another bit of interaction with another organisation. In those days, the football kits weren't quite the same as they are now. <laughs> a, bit, a bit more shabby, as you will see in the photographs. We were getting inundated with um, bands wanting rehearsal spaces. And on a Sunday afternoon, we could have up to five bands in this building. The noise was absolutely <laughs> unbelievable. But one of the things about the music is that the bands um, had nowhere to play. There was no venues around. And like the work, generally speaking, if you don't have a progression and you don't have an outcome, then there's no point in doing it. We decided to put gigs on. Uh, but they, were, they were okay, they were good nights, I mean, but then we started to sort of think a bit broader than our own bands, in the sense of bands on tour who could perform um, and attract more people into the building. Uh, one band was from um, North Wales called The um, 17, who later changed their name to The Alarm and they, they were actually in the hip parade, that was one, one band. The idea of the camping trips was to take those young people who, throughout the Cheshire West, who would not get a holiday. Um, and we were allocated three or four places. Um, we went primarily to the Yorkshire, Scarborough area, or North Wales. When we first came here in 1977, there was a group of very um, determined young ladies here, and they wanted to go out for a camping trip. At that time, none of the staff could support that work, that trip, but one of the ladies knew another lady who was happy to volunteer and help. I went round to see her and uh, tell her what it was all about, had an afternoon tea with her, and that sort of developed into a, a longer term relationship. <laughs> uh, she eventually became my wife. The camping trip, however, did not take place the girls had changed their minds. So I'm forever grateful to those girls. <laughs> Thank you.
come from that, especially through the pool tables, was what was used to finance funding the visiting bands. It was 10p a game. <laughs> so uh, when Duran, Duran wanted to come here, uh, they wanted £120. Uh, we, could, we couldn't afford that under the pool table takings. But we could afford the flock of seagulls, who were £110. <laughs> Thank you.
late 80s, uh, the youth employment was such that um, we were getting bombarded with um, uh, requests to be involved in trying to show young people career possibilities. One of them was being the army and they set up these uh, week-long courses based on an introduction to army life. So we stepped forward and organised, in the end, three, three trips a year to an army camp. Uh, and what we did, we recruited from the schools throughout the whole of Vale Royal at that time to take kids on these experiences, which is all free of charge, including the transport. Four gigs a year going on here, four were still being played and still active. But the other thing that continued is the um, Dunstein Clubs. They started back in the 80s and they carried on right through to the um, 21st century. Four times a week, uh, but originally we charged 2p to come in. In the 90s we were charging 5p. So, but we were getting up to 200 youngsters coming in here, four lunch times a week. entering um, annually the fashion show competitions that the youth clubs were organising um, we decided to organise our own one and it literally took over the whole centre for a week. Um, we had staging brought in um, directly behind me um, and we had a, a T-shaped st stage erected. We had black drapes throughout the whole of the, um, the hall. We had Manchester College involved in doing the makeup and the hair in the side rooms and we had clothes donated by a um, local clothes shop at the time. But it was um, a mega, mega event, uh, a lot of organisation. Um, and it was a really, really good night and the whole hall was packed out with um, all the parents and so on. Um, <laughs> It was manic, um, it was manic, um, uh, and we still use them at odd times, so um, um, the hall, you couldn't move in the hall because the, they filled the hall up. 
you can only afford two a, two a year. They were very expensive to bring in, but they were popular nights, and I had to make sure that every equipment was adequately staffed by a member of staff good nights. And they were something different. And that's what some of the young people wanted, something different, not just the continual youth club, um, the regular activities. They wanted something a bit more spicy, something a bit more exciting. It had always been a part of our sort of philosophy to try and do that.
Okay, for the last 10 years, uh, there's been some phenomenal improvements to the building. A lot of, it's, a lot of that's been done by volunteers. Uh, we have a strong staff team here. Uh, the lease has been extended to 30 years, so that gives us security, and with that allows us to gain extra funding. Very, very important. The membership is increasing, the user groups are coming in, a lot of community people coming back into the building, and they've got a lot of passion for this building, a lot of um, happy memories, so we're up and running, and we're going to keep going. A lot of people do, do not know or understand the, the, the size of this building, what's inside. We know from the people who are coming back into the building, the people we meet on the streets, there's a big um, passion and need for this building. Um, people have got a lot of happy memories and the people, the community still support us. So we're going to carry on doing what we can for the community.